I know you're excited to get started and throw something up on the screen and actually get the game going. But let me take just a few seconds here and run over the main.lua. I've got already a few things in here. This isn't an empty file, and that's by design. Uh, up here at the top, we have housekeeping stuff. And I'm not going to go through necessarily uh, walk through every little detail of this thing because this is a crash course after all. So if there's some stuff where you just kind of scratch your head and go, huh? We're we'll just kind of taking on faith that you need it for right now. But basically, this right here set status bar. That hides the status bar at the top of the phone uh, or the device. That's the where it shows the time. And if, if it's a phone, it shows your carrier and things like that. We don't want that for a game. And then we set up a couple local variables. Center X is now going to equal display.contentCenterX. And the reason we do that is because typing center X is just easier and faster than typing display.contentCenterX. And we do that for center Y also. That way if we want to uh, position something at the center of the screen, we can do that really easily with center X and center Y. Here's a space where we can set up forward references and that scary sounding term we'll get to later. It's no big deal. Uh, here's a section we're going to be preloading our audio files because with Corona SDK what you do is you you load them ahead of time and then you use them when you need them and that way there's no lag time as soon as you when you want an explosion to happen you want it to happen right now you don't have to wait for it then we've got an area here we're going to be creating our play screen and that is the background and the the title and things like that and then we have a section for game functions and we have a few functions that we're going to be creating and if you don't know what a function is a function basically is a chunk of code that we'll call later on. So we can put a bunch of code right in here. We can put it, you know, 10 lines or a thousand lines. And when the program runs, it basically skips this, but it says, hey, there's a chunk of code there and it's called spawn enemy. Later on, we can just say spawn enemy and it'll run back and, and execute all of the code that's inside that function. So we're going to have a function called spawn enemy, which is going to spawn an enemy. One called start game, kind of set things up. Planet damage, when the planet gets hit by one of these uh, enemies, something needs to happen to it. And then the actual hit planet. Uh, so, so actually hit planet will happen first. And if hit planet happens, then it, oh, it calls planet damage. And then we have one called ship smash. So if you're able to smash one of the ships before it gets to the planet, cool, the code inside here will run. And then at the very end, we have a call to start game. What that means is that it'll run up here and run any of the code that's in this function right here. Okay, so this is, this is what we're starting with. Let's go ahead and inside of create play screen, let me show you how easy it is to put a graphic on the screen. Do display dot new image and all we have to do is put in here the name of the file and we're going to do background.ping. Let's go ahead and save that and run it. Ooh, we already have a graphic up on the screen. That's how easy it is to put a graphic on your device. We could build this to the device and actually install it on our iPhone, iPad, uh, Galaxy Tab, whatever, and it would it would be there. Let's go ahead and put in one more. So now this is going to display the planet. And there we go. Planet's uh, up here in the corner though. How do you how do you fix that? Here's how you do that. First of all, let's create a variable called planet and it's going to equal what this returns. When we do display.newImage, not only does it create this on the screen, but it passes back to us a display object. And that display object we're going to set to this variable called planet. Now that we have that, we can change different properties about that display object. One of the properties is the X coordinate. Now the, the screen is laid out so that X goes from left to right, starts at zero, goes from left to right, and Y, y coordinate starts at the top zero and goes down. So if we want to change where it is in the, on the screen, we can go planet.x equals center x. Let's go ahead and run that. Ooh, okay, and now if we do, do planet 
dot y equals center y, I bet you know where it's going to end up. It's going to end up right smack dab in the middle of the screen. And the cool thing about Corona SDK is that if we want to, we're viewing this as iPhone right now, if we want to view this as uh, Galaxy S3, we end up with the planet right in the center of the screen. Now, we can see that the, because of this, the background's not in the center of the screen. Well, we never even changed the background coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do local background equals display new image. So now the background is, is returning a display object called background. And we're just going to do exactly the same thing. Background.x equals center x and background.y equals center y. Yeah, let's run that. Switch back over to Galaxy S3. Boom. Perfect. And just like that, we've seen how easy it is to not only display a graphic, an icon, a sprite on the screen with Corona SDK, but then you can actually move it around using the different properties of that display object. And the display objects have a lot of properties. And we'll be getting into more of those as this course progresses. But for right now, let's go to the next video and look at how to move things around on the screen.